Hi, this is Tim Donahue from Duraspace, and this particular screencast will be talking about the 2013 DSpace Roadmap, along with recent vision discussions that have been taking place over the last few months. This is being recorded after Open Repository, so there's a couple changes to these particular slides, but most of the content here is actually identical to the slides that I posted for the Open Repositories conference. So to get started here, here's an overview of where I'm going with this particular talk. I do want to give a couple of brief introductions of some of the main groups that are involved with DSpace software. I'll talk a little bit about DSpace 3 releases that have happened over the last year and mention the upcoming DSpace 4 release that will be happening later on in 2013. But mo most of this particular screencast will be talking about the DSpace 3 to 5 year vision discussions that have already begun and how you can get more involved with those vision discussions and help us figure out where we want to bring DSpace software over the next 3 to 5 years. And we'll talk about the next steps for all of these processes along the way. But uh, first and foremost, I do want to post up a list of all of our current DSpace committers. These are the folks that really work hard to make the software what it is and do all of the releases for DSpace software. So these are our developer team, um, essentially, for DSpace. They're volunteers from throughout the world. And as you can see from this particular slide, it's a mixture of folks that have been around for several years running, as well as a lot of brand new folks that have just joined up with our team and have been helped, helping more often in more recent releases. We're constantly adding new committers uh, to our particular group because obviously some folks move on to new roles and we want to get some fresh blood within our committers group as well. So if you have people, uh, developers that you know of or other sort of people who you feel would be worthwhile to add to our committers group, please let us know. You can email us on, on various listservs or contact any one of these committers to recommend someone to add to this particular group. I also want to highlight our DSpace Community Advisory Team, uh, better known as DCAT. Uh, this is a group of volunteers who are mostly repository managers and similar, who work in conjunction with the committers to help make the software better. They help us mostly to, uh, to come up with use cases and various uh, feature requests that are necessary to add into DSpace software and also help us to locate developers if we really need to. Um, so if you're interested in getting more involved with DSpace and want to help with the direction of new features, help out with use cases for existing features and enhancing existing features, I highly recommend getting involved with DCAT. Um, it's totally up to you what your involvement may be. It's a volunteer group as I mentioned, but there's a link down there at the bottom for how you can get involved with DCAT and take part in their discussions. They have a monthly meeting uh, that they, the, a monthly conference call I should say, that they all meet up on and also a, a list where they kind of try and get their work done behind the scenes. But it's another way to get involved with DSpace even if you're not a developer. So check out DCAT if you get a chance as well. Um, over the, the last year, you may have seen many announcements about DSpace 3 releases, and I thought I'd highlight a couple of the main new features within DSpace 3. So we have a rewritten and improved OAI PMH interface, which includes support for driver and open air, uh, which may be of interest to many institutions. There's some advanced embargo functionality where you can add uh, more embargo information into the submission process, either a more simplistic form or a me more detailed form. We have a beta version of uh, item level versioning, so you can actually version particular items within DSpace, as well as a new mobile interface for DSpace. There's type-based submissions, uh, which allow you to essentially create different submission workflows for different types of documents, whether it's a dissertation or a white paper or maybe some sort of image um, or the like. Um, but it's a new feature within DSpace. There's also many uh, improvements that went into DSpace 3 that came from throughout the world and throughout our broad community. A lot of them uh, were enabled by our movement uh, to GitHub for uh, development processes. But I added a link here at the bottom of the page that gives you 
um, a direct link into the, the more details around DSpace 3 and many of the new features around DSpace 3. Regarding DSpace 3, I also wanted to highlight that it's the first time we actually managed a release with a release team. In past releases, uh, we tended to have a single release coordinator, and we found more recently we've had so much involvement from community developers, so many um, bug fixes that have been passed back to us, that it's really hard to manage with a single person. So we formed a release team. Uh, the committers on that particular team are listed here. And um, it really went through a, a great process of actually getting a small team together to collaborate on actually cutting the release, making sure the announcements went out, all those sort of things. And we're going to be including that within uh, future releases as well. If you want more information about DSpace 3, it's a, that's a very quick overview, obviously. Hardy Pottinger, a member of the DSpace 3 release team, actually great, gave a great presentation at the Open Repositories conference and I have a tiny URL link to his PDF version of his presentation at the bottom of this particular slide. So you can go there and get much more overview and screenshots of the various features, who provided the feature, um, and a lot of other exciting things about DSpace 3 over the last year. But I also want to make uh, an announcement here of DSpace 4, which will be coming later on in 2013. The features are still being worked out by the committers. We're hoping to get them nailed down a little bit better in uh, August, probably late August or early September time frame. But right now, these are some of the features that may be coming in DSpace 4 that we've heard people are working on already. Uh, there's already some enhancements to SWORD that are coming. There's been a lot of discussions about a REST API and whether we can get a beta version of a REST API. Lots of search and browse enhancements that could be coming in DSpace 4 including potentially adding, uh, by default, the ability to do sort of filtered searching through DSpace Discovery that may be enabled by default. There's lots of other features that have been brainstormed, many of which are listed on our 4.0 release page, which is linked down at the bottom of this particular slide. And we already have a 4.0 release team in, in, um, in place as well. So if you'd like to get more involved with DSpace 4, or if you have features that you've worked on locally, or bug fixes that you've worked on locally, that you'd like to contribute back, we'd encourage you to add those into our issue tracker, or submit them via GitHub, or um, add a quick note to the DSpace 4 wiki page, the link at the bottom of this particular slide, so we can make sure uh, to get them within our review process and try and make sure they get released to the entire community in DSpace 4. But you can look forward to DSpace 4 coming later on this year. Um, as, um, as another quick plug here, as a reminder actually, uh, we're, going, we're moving into a process of releasing one major DSpace release every year. And those will be, be coming at the end of each year. So we had DSpace 3 released late in 2012. DSpace 4 will be coming here in late in 2013. 5 will be coming in 2014, 6 in 2015, and on and on. So we're going to be doing a major release every single year along with any bug fix releases that are warranted. And because of this process of doing one major release every single year along with um, the number of committers that we have and all of that, we're really wanting to establish a DSpace support policy. So this was just voted in amongst the committers group within the last uh, few weeks to a month, and there will be emails going out to the lists uh, very shortly. But this basically describes our support policy around how we're going to, um, going to release security patches to the DSpace platform and what versions we're actually going to be doing bug fix releases for. So as, as you can see in this basic slide, we're really only going to be supporting bug fix releases for the most recent major version. So right now that's DSpace 3. Um, as of you know later this year, that would be DSpace 4. If there's a major bug that we ever encounter, there may be rare scenarios where we would actually go back and backport that bug fix to previous releases. As for security patches, if we uh, receive notification of some sort of security hole within DSpace, the committers will make all efforts to actually release 
a security patch for the last three major releases of DSpace. So as we currently stand, that would be DSpace 3, DSpace 1.8, and DSpace 1.7. Obviously, as we have new major releases, that will be a shifting um, group of releases that we'll be providing those security patches for. But this gives you a better idea around uh, what sort of um, protection you have within your DSpace platform and where you might want to be in terms of upgrades. You may want to try and plan out at least upgrading every three years, uh, but you could try and schedule upgrades every year since we're going to be having those scheduled releases at the end of each year. You might want to work with your development team or your sys administrators to see if you can try and schedule a few weeks near the end of the year or a few weeks near the beginning of the next year to actually perform your yearly DSpace upgrade. And as a reminder, we have the release numbering down here at the bottom of this particular slide. There's more information about this brand new support policy at the link at the bottom of the page, and you'll be seeing much more information um, out on lists as well. And feel free to ask questions, of course, of the committers if there's anything that's unclear around this particular support policy. So, but the majority of the rest of this particular screencast is going to be covering the three to five year vision for the DSpace platform. This discussion started actually as a small vision meeting uh, that took place back in May amongst 10 stakeholder institutions. And that came out of a March summit of DuraSpace sponsors. It was suggested by the sponsors that we have this small meeting to see if we could come to a, a commonality amongst this small group of stakeholder institutions around where we would like to see the DSpace platform move within the next three to five years. So the goal of that particular meeting was actually to establish this three to five year vision. Um, and this vision was much more long term, so it's not around trying to establish what the 4.0 release looks like or the 5.0 release looks like, but rather where we want to be within three to five years. So it's over a series of releases that could be coming up. It also provides, provided our, our community an opportunity to really reinvigorate the software and refresh our use cases after 10 years of an institutional repository platform. Obviously, institutional repositories as they are have changed a lot over the last 10 years. It also helps us to establish a potential community-led project around um, the DSpace platform, how we can uh, move this platform forward even in potentially a more rapid fashion if we wanted to. Uh, similar to the Fedora community, um, if you've been aware of the Fedora Futures project in Fedora 4, there was a community-led project that has been established there to really try and reinvigorate the code base and move rapidly towards a new version of Fedora within a rapid time frame over just a couple years. And this gave us an opportunity to do this, this as well if we wanted to in the DSpace community. But that initial meeting report is actually linked at the bottom of this particular slide, so you can actually get an, a sense of what all was discussed at that initial meeting and what we came out of it with, uh, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more here in this particular presentation. Sorry, I need a little refresher here of coffee during this particular screencast. But here's the draft of the three to five year vision as we currently see it. So essentially it comes down to five main points that this small vision group came up with. They're all very high level in nature and they don't really assume any particular implementation um, behind DSpace software. It could be that, you know, DSpace could stay on the current implementation, obviously. It could move to different sorts of implementations. Uh, whatever it may be that we decide upon. That's really yet to be decided. The goal of this particular vision discussion was really at the high level. So I'm going to go through each of these in a little bit more detail, give you a sense of some of the discussions that have already taken place, and you'll have an opportunity to give feedback via um, the DSpace wiki, via, um, via our mailing list within DSpace, or you can also email me or any of uh, the committers directly if you wanted to. So DSpace, really, in the th next three to five years, we feel that DSpace should focus on institutional repository fundamentals. 
but really modernize our use cases, bring it more to the, the next three to five years rather than talking about an IR for the last ten years. Obviously those use cases have changed. We want DSpace software to be lean and flexible. We want to be able to include that core institutional repository functionality, but also allow for extensions for third-party plugins. And you'll see that concept coming up throughout this entire next section. We want DSpace to be designed so that it can integrate well with other systems. It shouldn't be a standalone system. It should work well within an entire ecosystem of digital repository, digital scholarship tools and services. And we also want it to be able to support low cost or hosted environments for those that want them. So to go into each of these points in a little bit more detail, first and foremost, focusing on the institutional repository. What this really means to us is that DSpace is an institutional repository at heart. That means that the core functionality is really around the ideas of what is an institutional repository um, currently and over the next five years, what we see those use cases as being. It's worth noting, though, that uh, the, the phrase institutional repository is controversial a little bit in itself. And even this particular vision group agreed that that phrase may not necessarily be the best one for what DSpace needs to be. The word institutional, institutional itself may be a little bit too limiting. Um, the word repository obviously is the best that we have for the tools that we're building at this point in time. But the main idea is that we want to figure out what those modern use cases are for what DSpace should be, the, the repository system that it should be. Anything that doesn't necessarily fall in those main use cases could still be supported by DSpace, but we'd recommend that those non-core things be implemented as plugins to the platform. So they'd be optional add-ons that you could install into your DSpace system if you wanted them, but they may not necessarily be there right away out of the box. The second point is that DSpace really should be lean and flexible. This is really to say that we do not want a system that attempts to do or be everything for everyone. Uh, that sort of system just, you know, involves a lot of bloat. The system will get way too big over time. We want to keep it lean and flexible, and we want it to be really focused around those core repository use cases. So that means trying to, to focus those use cases on very specific needs um, that we see now and over the next five years. And anything that is not within that very focused vision really needs to be supported more as third-party plugins so we can maintain that really lean, flexible framework that we want. Next is really a, the point around those core institutional repository use cases. What I see this is a balance around what is out of the box versus what could be offered more as a plugin. Uh, and this is a discussion that not one institution can really answer. It's something we need to determine together as an entire community. We need to really do a survey around what are the use cases that people want out of DSpace now, and what do they foresee wanting over the next three to five years. And then we need to really find what's common amongst all of our institutions so that we can determine those common things that really should be in out-of-the-box use cases versus those not so common but still important things that could be provided more as plugins to the framework. Because we really want to make sure that we can maintain, implied in all of this, is that we want to be able to maintain that out-of-the-box goal that DSpace is really good at. We want to be able to provide that out-of-the-box institutional repository set of use cases but still allow you to extend to other sort of um, slightly different use cases based on your local needs. So next, we want DSpace to be designed to integrate. And this is really admitting to all of us that, you know, we all know that standalone systems are a thing of the past. We need DSpace to really plug into all of our other tools and services that we're offering in our institution and in our library, provide those integration points that other tools can build against the APIs, the REST APIs, SWORD, uh, things of that nature. And we also need to be able to build our own integrations into external systems, so things that are already within this scholarly communication ecosystem that DSpace should really plug into or pull data from. 
So DSpace already does this pretty well in a lot of ways, but we just want to be able to keep that and also, you know, improve upon it um, over the next three to five years. And the final point here, which Maybe a little bit of a, a side point uh, to some, but we all felt it was really important in these initial vision discussions, was that DSpace needs to be able to support that low cost hosted environment, should you want that. And to me, what that really is saying is that we want to be able to have a web based configuration and setup, and also upgrade process for DSpace. We want to be able to provide more of those tools, those configurations, those initial setup tools to the web interface, to an administrative interface within DSpace, rather than relying on the command line so much to do the installation, to do the configuration. So we want to make it as easy to set up as possible, um, whether that situation is in a hosted environment or whether it's really on your local servers, we want to bring more of those tools to the UI so you can manage that, whether that's local, whether that's an Amazon, whether that's with your internet service provider, and manage that all via the user interface as mu much as we possibly can. So bringing these five points together into a general summary, what I sort of see as the, the overall vision that we're sort of painting with DSpace is one of DSpace as sort of a WordPress-like institutional repository solution. It's not that we're trying to build on WordPress. We're not trying to take WordPress and turn it into an IR or anything like that. It's more that we're trying to meet a lot of the similar goals that the WordPress product has already met within its own community. So some of those goals that WordPress is already really great at is that easy to install process. They have their famous five minute installation where you can get WordPress up and running and working at a basic level just within five minutes. That ability to configure most everything within WordPress from the web user interface including their diverse array of third-party plugins and themes that are available through WordPress. And they also have that very large active support community which is parallel to our DSpace uh, very large active community as well. But it's really trying to see if we can accomplish many of these similar things that the WordPress community has already accomplished, but do it in our current institutional repository system that is DSpace. So this whole vision is actually summarized at the URL at the bottom of this page. So you can go there and actually see a sense of that high-level vision on that page, as well as a quick brainstorm of some of the early use cases that we've already thought of that DSpace may want to meet within this vision. So I'd encourage you to take some time to go to that page, look at this vision, comment on it, also feel free to add your own use cases if you see gaps there or if there's things that are really important to you that you see um, that are absolutely necessary um, in DSpace over the next three to five years. We're really trying to make sure this is a community-wide set of use cases so we can come to that common set of use cases community-wide. So and that brings me on to the, the next steps. And I realize one of these next steps actually is a, a discussion that took place at Open Repositories, a quick panel that happened there, and some of the feedback that came out of that, much of which I actually added in this to this particular screencast. But like I mentioned, we're wanting to try and gather use cases and feedback, both via the mailing lists as well as that wiki site, which is still at the bottom of this particular slide. Um, coming up, as we start to get these use cases or brainstorm these use cases, we're going to be collaborating with the technology team, the committers, on a technical roadmap, on a possible implementation plan around how we could achieve a lot of these goals, these new use cases, and um, and the the vision for DSpace over the next three to five years, and what sort of possible implementation routes we could take so we can start to decide what the scope around this project looks like and how we may want to try and implement a potential community project around this, this particular implementation plan. As part of that, obviously, be, there will be some discussions around how we want to, to govern a community project should one get established and how we want to locate any sort of funding or um, developers, volunteer developers, around trying to make this vision a reality. So we really encourage you 
to get involved with this process. You can be as involved as you want to be. This is not some sort of secret uh, group that's off doing things behind the scenes. We're trying to make this as transparent as possible, which is part of the reason for recording this quick screencast, this on-the-fly screencast, and making it available to everybody. We want you to have the opportunity to give us feedback around this vision, to give us your use cases that you see very important to your institution. And you can also get as involved as you want to be. If you're interested in being involved on the technology team, on our very loose knit of, um, of visioneers or uh, the vision team, please do get in touch with myself or with Jonathan Markow um, from DuraSpace. Uh, we will be glad to add you to our to our um, very initial mailing list of this DSpace Vision Group um, that we've just begun, and we'd glad to be be glad for you to be more involved within the entire process to help us establish what an implementation plan may look like, help us get involved with potential governance around a project should we establish one. We really want you to be as involved as you're willing to be. And we also uh, will at some point in time, should we, be, should we establish a project around getting towards this vision, which we hope to do obviously, um, there will probably be a time where we could really use some development help, could really use some funding help. So if you can think about that within your own institution, if you possibly have part of a developer or a little bit of funding sitting around that you'd be willing to, to pass our way to allow us to establish um, this vision to make these goals a reality. We'd love to have that as well once it comes to that. But there'll be much more discussions that will be taking place on the wiki, on, um, on mailing lists, in future screencasts, in future presentations. So we really encourage you to, to keep involved, to keep, keep, um, keep up to date with what's going on. But the main place to go is that link at the bottom of the page, as I mentioned here, where you can start to comment immediately, start to add your own use cases, so we can start to move this process forward and see where things go next. So thank you very much for listening to a little bit of my ramblings here with this screencast. Um, I hope you got a little bit out of it. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Um, this, uh, this set of slides actually is also available on my uh, SlideShare account, which the link on this last slide is there. So you're welcome to go to those slides if you wanted to download them or review them on your own uh, later on. Please uh, feel free to contact us and all that. And we look forward to, uh, to hearing about your use cases, to hearing your feedback, and talking to you uh, throughout this entire vision process. So thank you very much for your time. Bye.